Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, elephant, shrew, an ichthyosaur takes a snack and dinosaurs are big. Starting off the news this week, a species of elephant shrew that was last officially sighted in the 1970s has been seen again in Djibouti. Naturally, the shrew, named Elephantulus revoili, is a very rare species of elephant shrew, which is of course not an elephant, but neither is it a shrew. The scientists who found the shrew again tried to bait them out using a bait mix which included peanut butter, and sure enough they were able to document this cute little creature once again. Naturally, there was great worry that this animal's population was troublingly low, but after finding 12 of them on their expedition, the scientists are relieved and confident that Elephantulus revoili are not experiencing any major population problems. Up next is a very intriguing study that proposes an interesting cause for the extinctions that occurred at the end of the Devonian, a nearby supernova. The researchers explain how the extinctions coincide with a significant drop in stratospheric ozone, which had been suggested to be due to a global temperature rise. But they hypothesize that a supernova could have been the reason for this drop instead. Such an explosion would have had to have happened beyond the kill distance for a full mass extinction, and the paper also provides some possible tests that could be done to prove this supernova hypothesis. A very intriguing idea. And now over to Ben with the paleontology news. Thanks, Doug. Also in the news this last week is a very cool paper describing an amazing fossil that preserves a 5 meter long ichthyosaur which had consumed a 4 meter long thalatosaur. Dating to the Middle Triassic, this is therefore the oldest example of megafaunal predation by a marine reptile that we know of so far. It also indicates that megafaunal predation was likely more common in Mesozoic marine reptiles than we'd realised before, since this ichthyosaur had grasping teeth that don't appear to have been particularly suited to such prey. However, it clearly still could feed on megafauna, and since many other marine reptiles had similar teeth, it raises the possibility that they could too. So those oceans appear to have been even more terrifying than we'd appreciated. Lastly, a fascinating paper has been published that's looked at the relationships between the unique dinosaur trabecular or spongy bone architecture and its mechanical behaviour. Using CT scans of bones from several differently sized non-avian dinosaurs, they found that as dinosaurs got larger the trabecular bone didn't get thicker, but instead increased in the density of occurrence, a very effective weight saving adaptation that allowed large dinosaurs to still move easily. This is the first time such methods have been used in gaining a better understanding of extinct species bone structure, and learning more about how the trabecular architecture of dinosaurs works will undoubtedly lead to more fascinating discoveries about these animals. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week. I do hope you enjoy. It's late May, 1940. He was resolute in the face of his fate. It seems Mitchell's time was running out. Never in the field of human there conflict. massive air raids launched on the south so of England. With so much owed by so many. It's so few. Join me as I take a look at the magnificent journey of this beautiful plane, from Mark 1 to Mark 24, through all its successes and failures, from those who loved it to those who feared it. The Spitfire.